Hello there friends, this is Dota News, we are here to create the best Dota News channel ever, here's what we cover in today's episode. Reshuffle season continues, Nigma Galaxy introduces their new roster, new Gorg ban, Seb and haters and much more. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. Let's start with the unexpected news, namely those that occurred in the region of Southeast Asia. This time we're talking about Bleed Esports. They have parted ways with the ex-OG player Taiga. This was reported on the team's Twitter account. We remind you that he was playing with the team only for a month and they didn't achieve any success at all. But then Bleed Esports just recently announced who's gonna join the team to the mid lane and replace Taiga. And it's, as you might have guessed, Mikoto and Polosun. During his time in Talon, Mikoto showed himself very well and this will be a clear reinforcement for the team. Paulson has played in SMG, IG, Azure Ray and T1. And he's also ranked 67th in the ladder, so I think that's a good replacement. And Bleed Esports will get only stronger. Let's see what they will show together. Guys, what do you think about this roster? Write your thoughts in the comments below and as always, we wish Bleed Esports only the best of luck. Next, news came from Tundra and it's still unknown whether they will have Pure in their lineup or not. Nevertheless, they introduced the first three players of the new roster, and that's Whitemon and Nine Class as supports. And as you might have already guessed since you've been following my videos for a while, it's Topson. The legendary mid laner will stay with the team. Here's how Tundra introduced him on Twitter. Godson, Pogson, Topson, he has many names but our favorite it will always be Tundra.Topson. Get ready for some more insane mid lane action with Topson Dota. Hmm, so Tundra basically in two days revealed three players and it turns out very soon we will know their full lineup. Guys, who do you think will be the new players of Tundra Esports? Don't forget to write your thoughts in the comments below, but I remind you that there are real, real rumors about Pure joining the lineup as position 1. By the way, as always, Gorg had something to say. He suggested that since there's a big tournament coming up soon, maybe Tundra will register their new roster there. And he thinks that they will announce their roster before BB Dacha Dubai 2024. Well, thank you Gorg, that's kinda obvious because they're participating and all that. And since we're talking about Gorg, he also shared his opinion on account bans. He said that he doesn't understand how the system works, since Mason got his account banned and is currently just playing with Smurf again. Which is logical, but Gorg is not happy about it. He thinks that Valve should ban all accounts if a person's main account gets banned. Hey, wait, so basically Gorg is saying that if a person gets banned in Dota it should be like permanent? That sounds a bit too unfair, don't you think, guys? Write your opinion in the comments below, let's see how many of us will support such an ambiguous point of view. Mind Control also complained about Valve. In his tweet he pointed out that Immortal draft system is broken. Hello guys, the drafting system in MMR is pretty bad, can you fix it or bring the old one back or create a new one please? Half of the games are pointless. Pretty much Mind Control is right and many times we have heard statements that the Immortal draft system is flawed, but it is very unlikely that Valve will change it. And also don't forget that there are not many players at highest rank to cover all positions in each team. Personally, I don't really know what to see here, because if a pro player says that the system is broken, maybe Valve should do something about this, or just consider something. But guys, at our ranks, like 2, 3, 4k MMR, it's pointless to have the system without roles, because it will be complete chaos and the game will be ruined for all of us, for blue collar players. Obviously, and as always, if you disagree with me, just write your thoughts in the comments below. Let's discuss. But whoa whoa, let's get back to the reshuffle season as we're not done yet. Infinity are continuing the trend and have revealed their new lineup. The South American org has bid farewell to their previous players and have taken a new squad consisting of the following members. Shido, PP, Adrian, Kiri and Prada. Hey guys, if you have any ideas who are these people just write in the comments below and please explain to me because I have nothing to say about these guys. Anyways, let's wish good luck to the new team. Team. Hopefully they can become a dark horse in the Dota 2 scene that will surprise us all. 
Also, as sometimes happened, the insiders were right. Ramses revealed his new stack, but it's basically a full-fledged orc, which is called Liga Team. And as you might have already guessed, it's also sponsored by bookmakers. The team includes Ramses, Kiyotaka, Kasane, Immersion and Roger. On paper, it looks really, really cool. It's hard to talk about any results yet, but so far the team has made it to the finals of the top qualifiers for BB Dacha 2024. Guys, and what's your opinion about this team? For example, Gorg thinks that this is a strong one. And now some news for the old timers as Pai Lai dies coming back to the scene. He will unexpectedly be coaching Talon. This very experienced player finally became a coach and he's ready to share his knowledge with the young players. Before that Pai Lai Dai played as support in Cloud9, Team Secret, Fnatic, Newbie and many others. Friends, do you think it will be good for the team or not? Anyways, let's get back to the juiciest and the most important news of the episode. Nygma Galaxy has finally revealed their new roster. And it's partially as insiders told and the other part is just unexpected, really unexpected. So Ghost joins as an offlaner but Araman joins as a position for support. So this is how Nygma Galaxy's roster looks like now. Miracle and Sumail as position 1 and position 2 but I guess they will swap roles whenever needed. Next, Ghost as position 3 player. And Araman and Kuroki as supports. I could say that this one looks promising, but I don't really believe it. You see, Nigma promised to show the new players before New Year, but they hesitated and posted the official announcement only a week later, and it was just Roman. I mean, he's a good player and he was once a good coach, but not anymore. And he basically looks like a last moment substitution. And as always, there's an opinion from Gorg. He said that in the MENA region the strongest team is Team Falcons, after it there is PSG Quest in terms of strength and only then Enigma Galaxy. Guys, my dear, dear Enigma fans, what do you think about the future of Enigma? Because this current roster could have been much, much stronger. Maybe in a month or two when another player becomes available they will bench Roman again. But well, who knows, only time will tell. Also, there is quite unexpected news about a brand new org that has gathered its lineup in Dota. And this org is heroic. They've been there in Counter-Strike for years and they showed themselves well enough. But now they decided to enter Dota. Moreover, we've told you that heroic are gathering a lineup in one of our first episodes. Anyways, the org decided to make a Latin American lineup, which includes former players of Beast Coast and Kid Stars. And as well, a former EG player. Here they are K1, Analog, Davai Lama, Schofield and KJ. And they're also managed by the ex-EG manager Guashinin, so they're gonna be okay. But it's hard to say how the lineup will perform Dota-wise, so let's hope for the good game. By the way, since we've touched CS a little, the famous English-speaking journalist Richard Lewis shared his opinion about Dota. Well, to cut it short, he basically invented the award ceremony of his own. It's like the opposite Oscars of esports. Here's what the title says, the annual celebration of everything terrible in esports. And here's what Dota won. This year's winner of the highly coveted, most irritating fanboys award for 2023 goes to Dota 2 fans. Fans. They're entitled Whining despite being the most pandered to fanbase in all of esports was ramped up as they accused Valve of ruining Dota Christmas. It's great to see that our favorite game isn't forgotten. Thanks, Mr. Lewis. Let's get back to reshuffles again, as Team Secret was also affected by them. Mid1 and Yamich left the team and Corden and Eki came in their place. Again, these were rather unexpected replacements and it's hard to say anything about the team, but let's hope that they will benefit the squad and Team Secret will please us with more and more good results. For example, Corden is one of the top players in the ladder and Eki is a good support who already tested in Team Secret before but didn't make it in the squad in the end. Man, I just love to see how Poppy experiments with his teams. Guys, what do you think about Team Secret? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Phew, finally, no more reshuffles. Here are some interesting details from the life of Blitz, the coach of Team Liquid. Insania and Quinn shared them in Cap's podcast, and it's a must-see. One time, okay, so at TI, his mom came by our practice room. 
I mean, I thought this was super funny. Maybe it's not at all. And maybe it's... Mm -hmm. Maybe we have to cut this out. <laughs> but who knows? <laughs> Anyways, so... For the entire time that we're there, like, at TI and doing our boot camp, we're just, like... Jokingly, extremely jokingly, just saying, hate Koreans. Whenever William's around. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. And then, like, after, like, enduring this for a month, his mom shows up to our practice room. And he, like, calls out me and Mickey in front of his mom. <laughs> And we're like yep. acting like, are you, William, what are you saying? Like, we would never say this. Why would we mm -hmm. say this? This is so inappropriate, William. And his mom immediately gets mad at him. And she's like, yeah, William always does this. He makes stuff up. He tries <laughs> to throw people under the bus. And me and Mick are like, yeah, yeah. William, how dare you, dude? What's wrong with you, man? Why are you like this? Dude, and he as does soon that... as his mom leaves, as soon as his mom leaves, we're both like, he creeps. <laughs> Dude, that's the that's the side of the story that I've never heard because I like I, I have also experienced that where it's him telling his mom like how much I hated her cooking or something like that. You know, when oh, she really? is a fantastic yeah. cook, right? She she is, is. very very is. good and she cooks some amazing food for us uh, whenever I go over there. But <laughs> he's just like he always said, yeah, mom. He, he fucking hated it. He's he's just lying to you right now. <laughs> and he's his mom is so sweet and so nice. But you actually said you hate Koreans, so you know. That's <laughs> well, we were in California after uh, after TI. We we're doing like we we're going. Me and Nat were going and doing some uh, some trip through the parks, the national mm -hmm. parks and stuff. And we ended up in California, and so we stayed at um, Will's childhood home where his mom is. And mm -hmm. she cooked us a meal one time, and the first thing she says when I enter the door is, "Oh, it's the enemy." Uh, <laughs> she like she makes jokes about like poisoning the food, and like you know they're they're going back like I'm it's host it's hostile as soon as I walk in. <laughs> Dude, William's family is great. It's just yeah. weird he turned out the way he did. But she was very she was very sweet, and the food was great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow, am I the only one who thinks it's pretty harsh and kind of pathetic for Blitz? Although it looks funny enough. But if I were Quinn, I'd be careful especially with the food. And now let's get to the most burning question for every player in our favorite game. How to raise a lot of MMR quickly. And Kazu knows the answer. He said the following. If you cannot raise your rating for a long time, it means that from game to game you make the same mistakes, which prevent you to raise it. One of the main problems Kazu highlights is the toxicity in the game, because in his opinion, instead of focusing on winning, players start to be toxic after unsuccessful fights, which undermines morale and hinders the game. I will quote, The only thing that matters if you want to earn MMR, if you want to be higher ranked, is the ability to win games that others can't. If you're stuck on your ranking, is because you're not looking for ways to win those games that other people are winning to get off that ranking. And that means you're doing something wrong. Guys, what do you think about raising MMR? If you have any better advices, share them in the comments below. Also, let's get back to Mason for a little. He says that players just report him for his past deeds and in his opinion it's not right at all. Here's what he said. I'm being reported by people for literally no reason and it's crazy that people are reporting me for my past and just because they feel like it. Hit that like button if you like my acting, bros. On the one hand, he's kinda right and it's kinda sad that people report him for things that he didn't do in a match. But on the other hand, it's the fate of a streamer. If you don't hide it, people will do crazy, sometimes bad stuff. So you have to cope with it. What do you think, guys? Anyways, let's finish the episode with a small retelling of the closed qualifiers at BB Dacha Dubai 2024. In the Eastern European region, Ramses and Virtus Pro made it to the finals of the upper grid, which was quite expected. In South America, Heroic showed what they're capable of. They made it to the grand finals of the upper bracket, beating Boom Esports. And you also can see Nouns defeating Shopify Rebellion. In Asia, the most shocking results were the defeats of G2 IG and T Talon. For example, Talon first won over G2IG but then lost to not the most strongest roster of IHC. Here I would also like to highlight Azor Ray as Faith Bian played flawlessly on Magnus. And overall Azor Ray looked very strong. And that's basically all, because there were no other qualifiers in other regions and it's not yet known when they will be and whether they will be at all. Anyways, as always, we wish everyone good luck and we hope for great games at BB Dutch. Ciao.
Guys, and that's all for today. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments below because it's really important for me to improve by listening to you guys. Also, hit that subscribe button to follow the best Dota 2 news channel ever. I'm not saying goodbye for a long time. See you soon.